And good morning to everyone that's watching us on YouTube, uh, Facebook, and uh, just uh, just want I wish that y'all were here with us. And but we got a great bunch of people here today to serve the Lord, and and that's that's the reason why we're here. This is a Bible preaching church, so let me start by all of us reading a scripture out of the Bible. You have a pew Bible in front of you. If you would turn to page 989, 989, take your church Bible, pew Bible out, and turn to 989. And we're going to read the last two lines of that page. 989. That's Matthew 28, verse 20, by the way. That might hit some of you in the head saying, oh, I remember that verse. (laughs) All right, if you're ready, let's all say it together. One, two, three. Oh, let's do that again, okay? Maybe I'll say it too louder and uh, so you can hear me and so we could all do it together. Here we go. And surely I am with you always. To the very end of age. That's a promise that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, has given us. So, what a wonderful thing. We are a Bible preaching church, a Bible teaching church. So, uh, we hope that any of you out there watching us uh, will say, Hey, I like to attend that church because that's what you do. Just a couple of announcements I'd like to uh, share before we get started. There's a sign up sheet in the back for the cottage meetings, uh, that's coming up tomorrow night. In Price Lounge. Is that right, PK? Yep. In Price Lounge. Uh, so if you haven't signed up for, for a cottage meeting, do that. And then that's at 7 o'clock, or excuse me, 6.30 uh, tomorrow night. Also on Tuesday, the youth group will meet at 5.30. And uh, <clears throat> they, have a <clears throat> excuse me, they have a good group. And so uh, all the kids, uh, don't forget to come to that. Thursday is UMW board. Uh, they meet at 9 a.m. on Thursday morning. It's going to be a board planning meeting. Uh, all UMW members are encouraged to attend, not just the board members, but all, all who wish to attend, uh, they're encouraged too. And then next, next Saturday, as every Saturday, we have worship service in the chapel at 5.30, so, uh, so don't forget that. If you can't make it on Sunday morning, don't forget that. A uh, big thank you to everyone that donated items to the Vacation Bible School and volunteered. Uh, obviously, it was a big success, and I, PK, I think you got something to say about that? Oh, you're in trouble now. He asked the preacher to talk. <laughs> you know what? If you, uh, if you helped with VBS uh, and you're able, stand up. If you donated to VBS, stand up. If you were here, brought children, stand up. If you prayed for VBS while it was going on, stand up. If you have a heartbeat today, stand up. Amen. You know what? We were blessed to have uh, so many youth involved. And thank you so much to those who who helped and donated and... uh, put sweat equity into VBS, and I was delighted to have to uh, have the opportunity to be here. And I think we made it every, every night except the last night, and we had a cottage meeting. Who scheduled that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Marlene was pointing right at me. Thank you so much for making VBS a success. You know what? Um, we have a future generation that we need to raise up in the church. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Are you ready to, uh, to worship? Let's praise God. If you would, as we praise God, this is your opportunity. As we pass the peace to one another, greet your neighbor and uh, pass the peace of Christ.
little boy in South Africa, and they had called him PK. Oh, okay. And so when, <laughs> when they started calling me that, it was like, no problem. As you are finding your way back to your seat, we will do our opening hymn, number 98, To God Be the Glory. Those who are able, please stand and join us in singing. God be the glory, great things he hath done, so loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear him. people rejoice oh come to the father through jesus the son and give him the glory great things he hath done oh perfect redemption the purchase of blood to every believer the promise of god the A pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he hath done. taught us great things he has done and great our rejoicing through jesus the son but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder our transport in jesus we see praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear his voice Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Please be seated. That doesn't get your fire lit. Your wood is real wet, right?
About the last decade, I have been prone to optical migraines. Any of you know about optical migraines? Now, I'm not talking about regular migraines. These don't hurt. They just take your vision away. And bright lights kind of bring them on. I'm glad we don't have any bright lights in here. So once in a while, if you see me up here and it looks like I'm dozing off, unless I'm snoring, I'm not. We have an opportunity now to continue our worship as we go to our God in prayer. We are worshiping our God. In fact, some might say that's the most basic and foundational worship that we can do is talk to our God. And you know what? God's calling plan beats anything the earth has to offer. He is available 24-7, 365, and the price is right. It's free. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Lord and our God, oh, how we adore you, Lord. You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first, the last. You are our almighty God. In fact, you introduced yourself to Moses as the, the I Am. And so often we refer to you as the great I Am. We adore you, God. We adore your loving, gracious, merciful nature. And we as your subjects need grace and mercy and forgiveness. Thank you, God, for being a forgiving God. 
Lord, we come before you on this day confessing. Confessing that we have those moments where we don't love you the way we should. We also come confessing that we have those moments when we don't love our neighbor as much as we love ourselves. And so we do, God. We come before you confessing that you, our forgiving God, you are exactly what we need. And so, God, hear our confession. Hear our our seeking your forgiveness. Thank you, God, for being a forgiving God. Oh, how we love you, Lord. We also know you to be a healing God. Your word is full of stories of miraculous healings that that take place. And and Lord, we believe those healings. And and Lord, we believe they happen today. And, And we also know, Lord, that there are times from a physical standpoint that you use the hands of men and women to be your healing hands. Lord, perhaps some of us today need your physical touch, your physical healing. Maybe a friend, an acquaintance, a family member. Lord, we pray for those who are in need of your physical touch and healing. Lord, sometimes in our brokenness, it's not physical. It's emotional. And so, Lord, we pray for those who struggle with anxiety and depression. We pray for those who are addicted, Lord. And we seek your emotional healing, God. Break those chains of bondage. Lord, we live in a busy and sometimes chaotic world and just living in the world and going and running and coming and going and all the things that seem to fall on our plate. Sometimes it's easy for our spirit to rub up against the busyness of this world and our our spirit seems to erode a bit. And so, Lord, all of us need your spiritual healing, your spiritual replenishment. And so, God, thank you. We praise your holy name, Lord. Lord, as we come together in these next few moments of silence, we pour out the the contents of our heart. Yes, Lord, hear our silent prayer. Lord, sometimes prolonged silence makes us uncomfortable because we're so used to the busyness of life. And yet your word says, be still and know that I am God. And so, Lord, help us always and everywhere to find those moments of Sabbath in our life. Those moments when maybe we can just be quiet, close our eyes, and remember that you are our God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your willingness to sacrifice on our behalf. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the way you coach and counsel us. We love you, Jesus. We now pray the prayer together that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. You know, this next hymn, His Name is Wonderful, we're going to sing it twice. We're going to sing it first as the children come up and uh, begin to get lined up as, uh, so they can serenade us with a couple of their VBS songs. And then once they're done, we will sing uh, His Name is Wonderful again. We're going to sing it twice. Once as the children come up and, and once after they've performed. Number 174. His name is wonderful His name is wonderful His name is wonderful Jesus my Lord He is the mighty King Master of everything His name is wonderful Jesus my Lord He's the great shepherd
Our scripture lessons this morning come from the book of Exodus and the Gospel of John. First, in Exodus 3, verses 11 through 14, found on page 57 in your pew Bible. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. And then from the Gospel of John, the 8th chapter, verses 52 through 59, found on page 1060 in the Pew Bible. And this they exclaimed, Now we know that you are demon-possessed. Abraham died, and so did the prophets. Yet you say that whoever obeys your word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died, and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Jesus replied, If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and obey his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of, me, of, the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You are not yet fifty years old, they said to him, and you have seen Abraham? Very truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. At this they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. This is the word of God for the people of God. You know, if the uh, phone rings at our house and we pick it up and someone asks for Walter, we pretty much know that it's a telemarketer. My name is Kevin Drain, but you may not be aware of this. My first name is Walter, named after my dad. If you see a business card of mine, chances are it's going to say W. Kevin Drain. Now, I used to tease my mom that the W actually stood for whoops, because I have one sister that's 10 years older than me, so <laughs> whoops. Oh, you just got that, huh? <laughs> Let me circle back around. You know, typically people in my extended family call me Kevin. Around the church, I'm frequently referred to as PK, which is short for Pastor Kevin. I don't know if you've made anything up for that yet or not, but it's supposed to be short for Pastor Kevin. In my ag days, while I was working in sales and marketing in the agricultural business, you probably, if you'd known me then, you would have called me Drano. Gee, where does that come from, huh? Although I had a few disgruntled customers that sometimes called me other things, as I recall. We won't talk about that today. Names often tell a story. They tell a story about us, or it may be that they remind us of an event or something that happened at a particular time in our lives. Now, my dad, Walt, was a very hairy man. Yes, I did just say my dad was very hairy. Now, when he was working in construction as a carpenter on a good hot summer day, he was known once in a while to take his shirt off and work. The other carpenters saw his hairiness. <laughs> I don't know what else you'd call it. And they began to refer to him as Yogi. Yogi Bear. 
right? Now, those same carpenters never called me Kevin. In fact, if I got around them, I was Yogi's sidekick. So they called me Boo Boo. Exactly. Man, you're a sharp group. You are up to date on your old cartoons. So I was known as Boo Boo, and if I ever at a family reunion hear someone refer to me as Boo Boo, I can tell you about what time in my life I knew them. Well, in today's scripture, as Tim was reading, we heard Moses ask God, how shall I answer the Hebrews when they ask me who sent me to them? God's response we find in Exodus chapter 3. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this very mountain. Remember the story? Moses is out leading the sheep, his father-in-law's sheep, and, and he's on the mountain, and suddenly he looks over and he sees this bush that's on fire, but is not being consumed by the fire. And God is saying, this is going to be a sign between you and I, because when you lead the people out, he didn't say if, he said when you lead the people out, you're going to worship me on this very mountain. Verse 13, Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What's his name? Then what shall I tell them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. The Holman Illustrated Bible Dictionary puts it this way, the fullest form of the name may be rendered, I am who I am. Or you could make a case that it stands for, I will be who I will be. Or you could even make the case that it could be translated, I cause to be what is. I cause to be what is. God's response is, is not a name that makes God an, an object that can be defined or limited. This name, I am, has no limitations with it. Rather, it's an affirmation that God is, is always omnipresent, right? Omnipotent, omniscient. That God is free to be and act as God wills. God made it clear to Moses that he's eternally present. He has always been, he is now, and he will always be. God was, God is, and God will be. Amen? This name of God also speaks about his eternal presence with the people. He is present to help us, to comfort us, to guide us so much more. His presence never leaves you. His word says, He will always be with you. And that may be the greatest comfort we as Christians can find in our God. That he will never leave us or forsake us. Amen? And let me tell you, when you've gotten that late night call, and you're wondering what's going on, or when the doctor calls to give you the results of your test, 
or when you hear the police sirens screaming down the street, when you have one of those moments when you just don't know, it is so reassuring to know that our God will never leave you or forsake you. Well, we learn it from the very name of God. I am. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 7, it says, You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Some of you may have heard about this uh, event that happened. Moses came down from the mountain with these stone tablets. Remember that story? What were they? This would be the interactive portion of our sermon. The Ten Commandments, absolutely. Moses came down off the mountain with Ten Commandments. The first one says, you shall have no other gods before me. The second says, you shall not make idols. And the third said, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Now, hopefully, some of you got a little sheet as you picked up your bulletin today. If not, it's probably still out there. Find it as you leave, right? But this is, I think, many of the names that God has referred to in the Bible, in Hebrew and Greek. And I just want to share them with you. Because God has many names that man has given to describe our God. The first of which is Elohim. Genesis chapter 1, we we can read about Elohim, which means God. Yahweh. Now, I pronounce that Yahweh, but honestly, we really don't know. Because you see, the Jewish people were so reverent about God that they would never write that with any vowels in the name. They would write Y-H-W-H. And they were so reverent that they would not pronounce the name of God out loud. So though we think it's Yahweh, truly, we, we truly don't know. Yahweh stands for Lord or Jehovah. El Elyon means the Most High God. Adonai means Lord and Master. El Shaddai, the Lord God Almighty. Frequently we, we think about the, the God of the mountaintops. El Olam, the everlasting God. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals you. Jehovah Nissi, the Lord is my banner. El Kana, a jealous God. Jehovah Makadish Kim. Say that three times fast. Jehovah Makadish Kim, the Lord who sanctifies you. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. Jehovah Shabiah, the Lord of hosts. Jehovah Ra, the Lord is my shepherd. And Jehovah Sid Canoe, the Lord is our righteousness. And finally, Jehovah Shema, the Lord is there. These were all names that, that men, as they got to know our God, these were the names that they shared about our God. Interesting, isn't it? That God is so much. To his people. Well, what about Jesus? What about Jesus? And again, Tim read in John chapter 8, verse 52, and, and, and Jesus is here and he's arguing. This is one of those times when Jesus is being upfront and honest about who he really is. And the Jews are giving him a hard time because he's, he's saying things they don't understand. At this they exclaim, now we know that you are demon-possessed. Abram died and so did the prophets. Yet you say, whoever obeys your word will never taste death. Are you greater 
than our father Abraham. He died and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Could you imagine talking to Jesus like that? Verse 54, Jesus replied, If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My Father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. And if I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. Ouch. But I do know him and obey his word. 56, your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. And again, the Jews, they just can't get out of this literal mindset. Verse 57, you are not yet 50 years old, they said to him. And you have seen Abraham? Jesus said in verse 58, very truly I tell you, Jesus answered, Before Abraham was born, I am. And immediately they knew what he was talking about. He was saying that I am. God is the great I am. And Jesus is saying, I am God. And I was there before Abraham was born. And at this, they picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus hid himself and slipping away from them, from the temple grounds. Jesus was saying, I am, before Abraham was born. That was blasphemy to the Jewish people. They thought he was claiming to be God. Jesus was letting them know that he was God. We don't have time for me to jump into an explanation of the Holy Trinity today. We can certainly have that on another day. Just know that Jesus was God. Jesus also said, I am, right? In several other places in the Bible. Maybe you've heard these. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. In another spot, he said, or I am the living bread. I am the door for the sheep, the sheep gate. I am the good shepherd. I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection and life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. And again, he said, before Abraham was, I am. I can remember another time when Jesus said, I am. Do you remember when he was in the garden with some of the disciples, and Judas had betrayed him, and and Judas and the temple guard showed up to arrest Jesus that night. And one of the guards said, Where is this Jesus? And he answered, I am he. I am he. And we know that they led him away to be crucified. God has let us know in several ways that his name is important and should be revered. Again, as I've preached before, it's not about knowing just about God. It's about being in relationship with God. Amen? It's not enough to know about Jesus. We need to be in relationship with Jesus. It's not enough for us to know about the Holy Spirit. We need to be in spirit with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Thank you. You know, in the Bible, sometimes as people went through changes in their life, their name changed, didn't it? I mean, think about this. Abram became, in the 17th chapter of Genesis, Abraham. In the 32nd chapter of Genesis, Jacob was renamed Israel. And in Matthew chapter 16, Simon became known as Peter. You know, today that's not necessarily a cultural practice that we participate in. Unless, unless you're a celebrity, right? Because celebrities seem to have a couple of different names. They have a stage name or an acting name. But here's a question for you. 
If the changes in a person's life dictated a name change, and if we were practicing that same culture today, then the question is, would your name have been changed yet? Hmm. Folks, I am a sinner saved by God's grace. I was that prodigal son that we talked about. That son who was lost and then found. That that son who was broken and yet the Holy Spirit was able to heal. Do I have a new name yet? No, I'm not talking about PK and I'm not talking about Drano. Do I have a new name yet? Here's one for you in Exodus chapter 23, verse 20. See, I am sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way and bring you to the place I have prepared. Verse 21, pay attention to him and listen to what he says. Do not rebel against him. He will not forgive your rebellion since my name is in him. Since my name is in him. See, the name of God was in the angel. I wonder, is the name of God in us? Are we changed because of the relationship we have with God, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit? Have we had a name change? Is God's name in us? That's worth pondering, don't you think? I think it is. And so that's the question I'll leave with you today. When people see you at work, do they see the name of God in you? When people see you around town, do they see the name of God in you? When they see you wherever, do they see the name of God in you? What about us as a church? What about us? All of y'all right? Yuns, use guys. What about the church collective? When people see us doing ministry, do they see the name of God in our church? Oh, may it be so, amen? See, folks, it really isn't about what we do for a living or where we live or what we have or what we possess. It's really about whose we are, what name is on us. So, I hope throughout the week you think about whose name is in you and that we think always and everywhere about whose name is on our church. And all God's people said, Amen. I'm going remote. Hopefully this is going with me. So today is Communion Sunday. The Lord's Supper, the Eucharist, Holy Communion. One of the sacraments of the Methodist Church. We're going to do things a little different. Don't get too excited. This may happen once a quarter. Okay? That new preacher changing stuff on us again. What are we going to do with him? Suffer through it. You know what? Pray with me. I haven't had an opportunity to bless these elements yet, and I'm going to move around a little bit as I do it. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just come before you on this day, God, and our prayer is that as we come into this time of Holy Communion, Lord, that your Holy Spirit is filling these wafers and this bread, that your Holy Spirit is filling this juice. We know that there's mystery behind this sacrament, that as we partake in the bread and as we partake in the juice, that your Holy Spirit will flow through these elements and into us, God. 
And so we pray that even as we speak, your Holy Spirit is filling these elements. But our prayer, Lord, is that it won't stop there. That as we consume the bread and the juice, that your Holy Spirit will move from them and into us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Give us more and more and more of your Holy Spirit. But let it not stop there, Lord, because once your Holy Spirit moves into the elements and then into us, that then it would move from us and into the world around us. That your Holy Spirit would fill our homes and our community and our world. And so it is, God, that we pray your Holy Spirit fall upon these elements of bread and juice. And Lord, in these next few moments of silence, let us as individuals find a time in the silence to get our hearts and minds and souls prepared so that we might receive. Receive Your blessing. Lord, are there people we need to forgive? Are there people we need forgiveness from? Lord, help us remember. Help us repent. And help us to be worthy of this communion. Thank you, God. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. And all God's people said, Amen. I don't know how much you you follow about the story of communion. Wednesday night, we talked about the Last Supper at BBS, didn't we? Hello, kids. (laughs) It's your wake-up call. We talked about the Last Supper, and the Last Supper actually occurred in an upper room, and it was a Seder meal. It was a Passover dinner. Uh, Passover had been a tradition for hundreds, if not thousands of years, for the Jewish people. It was scripted, highly scripted, and yet that night Jesus went away from the script. Because suddenly he reached in and he took a piece of bread. He broke the bread. He gave thanks to you, God. And he turned to those in the upper room and he said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. And a little later, during that same Seder meal, Some of the historians say that it was during the part of the Seder meal when they would take the third cup. The third cup was known as the cup of redemption. And so once again, during that third cup, the cup of redemption, Jesus gave thanks to you, God. And he turned to those in the upper room and he said, Take and drink this juice. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And he said, each time you eat the bread or drink of the cup, do it in remembrance of me. And so it is that we come together on this day to worship our God and to partake in this holy sacrament What we're going to do today is we're going to fill the altar area and you will be administered bread, everyone at once. And then we have, obviously, the little cups of juice instead of doing intinction today. And we will all take the juice together. You'll clear out and the next group will come through. Right? 
The offering plates are up here. If you need a gluten-free or uh, another alternative, there are wafers that are here. Uh, we don't have the communion baskets up front, but you know what? I bet if you will place it on the floor of the altar, we'll find your offering if you want to give to the Good Samaritan or the Benevolence Fund. So you know what? The deed was done years ago. I would ask my servers to come forward to help us. And I will serve you after we serve the congregation. Does that work? Um, we need two over there and watch those balloons. What a blessing. And uh, two over here. Won't you come? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Does that work for you? Why don't we uh, start at the back? We can do that since uh, everybody's kind of looking at me like, what do we do? Let's just start at the back. And, and please, even though we're going to do this one at a time, line up and it'll be a little more expeditious. How's that? No, they're fine. And so what we're going to do, we're going to fill the altar area. And then we'll give everyone bread, we'll take it together, and then we'll give everyone juice.
all God's people said, well, thank you for humoring me. But you know what? There's, there's really not a wrong way to partake of the Lord's Supper. Jesus sacrificed for us, and this is one of those ways that we can remember his sacrifice and, um, like I said, taste and see that the Lord is good. A physical and a tangible thing. Our closing hymn this morning is number 620, One Bread, One Body. Those who are able, please stand as we all sing.
Amen. Amen. In the name of God the Father and Jesus Christ, his holy and perfect Son, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, let us leave here and let us remember that it is his name that should be within us. Go in peace, go in love. Amen and amen.